Hi, my name is Grace Bukachi, and you're watching Saturday Special on Sitam Church Online. Never give up on yourself. I share this as I look back into my life and think of the times, the countless times, the opportunities I had to give up on myself. As a young lady, I think of an episode in life that um, I was so upset because I wasn't getting all the grades I wanted in high school. And I was so disappointed in myself. And that disappointment got so bad. One evening I thought, um, in, in A-level, in boarding school, maybe I should just, maybe I wasn't cut for being what everybody else expects me to be. And um, I had had a few people say that if you take a few, those days there was a medicine called mal malaria queen. And I thought, maybe, maybe if I take it, it'll help. It'll just get me out of the circulation. So I tried to swallow a few extra tab tablets. Well, I didn't move on. I was found myself there in the morning very sick and very uncomfortable and um, I couldn't tell people what I had done but I had almost given up. I was on the verge. I was actually giving up on myself and I just had to pull myself together. I had a lovely friend who used to pray and fast for me and and that particular week that I was really feeling bad she said Grace I'm praying for you and I that those are the words I didn't want to hear because I didn't think there was any hope for my for me well years later I look back and I think God does not waste any experience and you're waking up this Saturday morning and I don't know what you're going through where you're located in this country and you could possibly be feeling really bad with yourself and almost on the verge of giving up. You know, um, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm in ministry, and there's so many expectations. I'm a daughter. There's so, so many expectations um, that people have, and most of them I don't know. But I also have expectations for myself. And time and time again, if it was not for the Lord, I would have given up and thrown in the towel. I think of my years as a teacher and the joy and the fulfillment that I experienced. And now in ministry, it is really amazing. But I will not lie to you. There are very down days. Days that I think, Lord, what do you have in store for me? But when I move my focus, the focus from me and put it on God, an amazing thing happens. Somebody comes in the office and I realize that they are in a worse scenario than I am. They come and they say what they've been going through. And I find myself telling them, don't give up. And um, as I share this today, allow me to just share with you from the book of John, chapter 5, of, on a, the story of a person who should actually have given up on life. So this is the story of the man that Jesus healed at the pool of Bethesda. And this is what it says from John chapter 5 and verse 1. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now, there in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool which is Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five colonnade, covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there, had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid and replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred while I am trying to get in. Someone else goes down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk at once. The man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. 
The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. And so they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick, up, pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was. For Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. My sister, my brother, young lady, young man, you are watching me and I don't think, some, some of you could be 38 because that's the age of this guy, but some of you are not yet 38. So you've not found yourself in a crippled, disabled position at this particular entrance of the temple. It says Jesus didn't go into the temple. He went at the sheep gate at there and there was this pool called Bethesda. Bethesda means a place of mercy. Never give up on yourself because there's a merciful God who's reaching out to you in your paralyzed state. I don't know what it is, but this has been so strongly in my heart lately that perhaps you are a mom, you are a dad. And I'm going ahead of myself to the second part, but I want to talk to you. Never give up on yourself. You are much more than you could ever imagine. This guy never gave up because whoever put him at that gate every morning, he went there knowing that his day would come. Only he didn't know how, he didn't know who would put him. And so when Jesus shows up, he thinks this is the only way that he will get his healing. That was not Jesus' strategy. Jesus' strategy was not to put him in that pool. Jesus' strategy was get up. Allow me to read those words to you. Because I've had to read them to, and say them to myself. Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. There are times when you want to give up and you're at the verge. You've got to say, tell yourself, get up, Mary. Get up, Joseph. Get up, Anne. Get up. Keep Tanui. Get up. Never give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself, Grace. Never give up. Stand. And the Lord is just saying that to you this morning, this beautiful Saturday morning. Perhaps in the area you're in, it's really chilly. Get up and tell God, here I am. What would you have me do? What would you have with my life? You see, this invalid told Jesus, I have no one to help me. At the point of no return, you will have no one to help you. It's got to be you rising up from that pit and saying, I'm getting up, Lord, and I need your help. I need your strength. And once you get up, he will give you the strategies. He'll give you what to do next. But as long as you're lying down there and having a pity party and saying no one remembers you, and it's been so hard. You have no idea how many years I've waited. Mm -hmm. That guy was at that pool for 38 years. Two more years, he'd have been 40. Mm. Never, never, never quit. I have that in my office. And I look at it every morning when I come in. And I tell myself, grace by the grace of God, don't quit because it matters not how everybody else sees you out there. You know your low moments. You know that time when you want to just throw in the towel and perhaps you're considering it this weekend and you're saying to this coming week, I'm tendering my resignation. Don't quit, sister. Don't quit, brother. Never, never give up on yourself. This story has a beautiful ending. When Jesus told this man at the pool of Bethesda to pick up his mat and go. He woke up and went. And then it was a Sabbath on the day of worship for the nation of Israel in the biblical days. 
And so when he's seen carrying a mat, which is wrong, he's asked, what are you doing? And he says, well, somebody healed me. He didn't know who it was. And then Jesus found him. That's what it says. It says in verse 13, the man who was healed had no idea who it was for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd. Later, Jesus found him at the temple and he said to him, see, you're well again. Perhaps whatever condition would, is making you give up is because you've found yourself doing things you knew you should not do. And so you're giving up on yourself. You're saying, I cannot make it. I'm not worth it. Jesus is saying, stop sinning. He's, he said that amazing thing to this man or something worse. Those are not easy words may happen to you. And you know, this guy knew now that it was Jesus. So he was able to go and tell the guys it's Jesus who did it. This morning, I just want to encourage you that Jesus cares much for you and deeply. And he says, stop sinning. In the process of your wanting to give up, you could have been in messes or in things. You would have been doubling in stuff that you shouldn't be doubling in. Just surrender to the Lord. Say this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I was on the verge of giving up on myself. And today I choose not to give up on myself. I choose to arise. I choose to thank you for this situation and circumstance that I find myself in. And I choose to know that it is you that is encouraging me and telling me to get up, to take up my mat, to go back to that which you have ordained for me to do and you've called me to. And I don't go in my own strength. I ask for your help and your strength. I pray and ask this, believing and trusting in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. And I feel led to also ask that you pray this prayer with me and I'm going to ask that you do so. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I have struggled and I just want to keep giving up and I want to quit, but I don't want to quit. I need your help, Lord. Help me, Jesus. So I give, put my life into your hands. I call you Abba Father today. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. For I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, let us know. It'll be a joy for me and others who are on the Sitam Church online, different various platforms. We want to encourage you on Instagram, on Facebook. You can inbox me on Messenger. It'll be a joy and a privilege to know that you have given your life to Jesus. He never gives up on anyone. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews says that. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what the Lord is telling you today. Hebrews 13. Hang in there. Don't give up on yourself. God bless you.